Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and we haven't talked about Planet 9 in a while. Well, let's actually talk about it with a mini update about some of the recent studies, and specifically one study that seems to actually point at not needing this planet at all. Anyway, welcome to What Am I? So a few years ago, the media exploded with the announcement that we're probably going to find another planet known as Planet 9. For the longest time, a lot of scientists were pointing at all of these clues that suggested and indicated that Planet 9 might be a real thing. And some of those clues are actually visible in this simulation here. If you look at the orbits of various uh, trans-Neptunian objects that seem to have sh been shifted by some kind of a massive object. Now, the reason we, or many scientists, believe that Planet 9 might be out there is because Neptune is just too far away to do any of this. It's too far to influence objects like, for example, Sedna, which is right here, and whose orbit is unexplainable in uh, any other major way. Until, I guess, now. Or actually, that's not entirely true, because we've briefly mentioned a similar uh, hypothesis a few months ago, but now someone actually did the math. And I mean, I love the math, this channel is called What the Math, but I personally don't like doing the math, I like when math is done for me. And this is exactly what uh, this particular study did. The study known as Shepherding in a Self-Gravitational Disk of trans Objects um, by, well, people from University of Cambridge, but specifically these two wonderful people, um, actually calculates very precisely how you could potentially have all of these effects that we see here, and also a lot of other effects that were explained by the existence of Planet Nine, and potentially not need Planet Nine at all, but instead have, well, let me actually demonstrate to you, and there we go. A relatively large and somewhat eccentric um, and also inclined um, ring of Kuiper Belt objects. In other words, a huge, huge amount of trans Neptunian objects like Pluto and Sedna and so on, um, and other uh, planetary and also asteroid-like objects, with a total mass of approximately 10 masses of Earth. Now, in some sense, this explanation is obviously not as dramatic and not as fun as Planet Nine, basically another planet in our solar system, hidden full of secrets and full of mis mysteries. But then again, it's been a few years now, and we still have no sign of such planet. And we've been looking pretty damn hard. We've been discovering objects, like for example, uh, the one we discovered only a few months ago, this right here, Goblin, that was discovered around Halloween, and that object is actually relatively tiny in comparison, and if we can actually see this so far away, why can't we see the Planet Nine? On the other hand, we also discovered this object here, 2018 VG18, which was um, coined the farthest object in our solar system. Once again, much, much smaller. The size here is only possibly a few hundred kilometers in radius and definitely much more difficult to see than Planet Nine, but still no Planet Nine. Now, I personally have actually been always kind of skeptical about this planet and I've always kind of erred on the side of caution because I mean, we've had such a long time to discover a relatively large object. It's supposed to be uh, basically a planet that's um, about 10 times the mass of planet Earth. In other words, if I were to place it next to Earth, it would be this humongous uh, gas uh, giant. Or, in a sense, it's actually more of an ice giant. Now, this is a large object, and it's a very massive object, and we do have a relatively good idea of where it would be located, but we still can't seem to see it. So, for all of these reasons, for the basically the reasons of not being able to find it, other scientists started looking for uh, essentially a solution to all of this observation that uh, suggested the Planet Nine existed to begin with. And the ring, or the influence of a ring, similar to what you see on the screen, does actually make quite a lot of sense, because it's basically the mass that we would have otherwise in a single planet, but spread out across a very large area, that would have a relatively similar effect to what we observe. Now, there's still actually a kind of a similar problem. We don't seem to actually see that many particles out there. Not as many uh, trans-Neptunian objects have actually been detected to kind of justify 
the mass, approximately 10 masses of Earth. But on the other hand, there is actually one major proof or one major evidence for this hypothesis. And that's actually when we look at other stars. So even though in our own system, we don't seem to see that many particles just yet, because basically we're looking from the inside, it's relatively difficult to see them. We do observe a lot of very similar ring structures and very similar formations around other stars on pretty much regular basis. As a matter of fact, vast majority of stars seem to have these very large Kuiper belt like formations. And if we look at them from the outside, they're quite visible. So maybe if we were to look at our own solar system from the outside, we would actually see this as well. But because we're actually looking from inside, and we're looking at these particles and trying to see them, it's a lot more difficult that way. And so even though this particular hypothesis doesn't maybe have the most dramatic sort of explanation and doesn't really have that much proof behind it either, it does seem to make maybe a little bit more common sense because we've observed these rings around other stars. We've also been detecting a lot of trans-Neptunian objects very, very often and quite frequently now but we can't seem to find any large planetary object. And so having Planet 9 maybe is not the best sort of solution to this problem. And so until we actually discover an actual planet, and hopefully we do because it would be a pretty cool explanation, I'm going to have to side with this hypothesis. And I know it's more boring and I know it's not as exciting, but honestly, having this many trans objects, basically this many objects similar to Pluto, similar to Sedna, out there is also just as exciting. It just means that there's about 10 masses of Earth uh, worth of various objects orbiting around our system at a relatively far distance. This is kind of cool because imagine what we can actually discover if one day we get to make it that far. Or, I guess, for all we know, maybe it's actually a combination of both. Maybe there's both Planet 9, that's much smaller than we predicted, and also a relatively medium-sized ring of objects. So in that sense, the jury is still out on this particular topic. We might hopefully discover what's going on here in the next few years, but if not, if it takes us decades to actually figure this out, well, that's really how science works. We need to continuously test our theory and try to see if our solution actually makes sense. For now, though, it sounds like Planet 9 is actually slowly losing this battle, and this ring of relatively boring objects of 10 masses of Earth is slowly gaining more traction and more support across the scientific community. There's actually been a few um, scientists explaining it in this way, and I think this was actually the first paper I've personally read that goes through so much detail trying to explain it. Now, if you're not afraid of math and if you would like to read it, it's available in the description below. But for now, I guess that's where we're going to stop. And well, let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think? Do you actually believe that there is another planet somewhere out there in our solar system? And if so, why? I know that we all want to believe secretly, but I mean, sometimes the dramatic explanation is maybe not the best. I personally hope that in the next three or four years we'll finally come to a conclusion so we can kind of put this particular hypothesis to rest. But for now, I'm going to be going with the disk. Planet 9 is maybe not the best explanation here. Anyway, thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known before and subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye. And before we finish this video, let's maybe bombard Planet 9 with some wonderful planetary objects to see how it responds if we basically shower it with various planets and various rocky objects. Here we go. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out.